So your camper van's not camping, and your electric bill's been ramping. Your array of dormant solar is only getting older. Well, let's put it to work and stop the electric bill hurt. This video is strictly for proof of concept. If you plan to pursue a similar system, ensure you check with your local electrical utility for a list of approved grid tie inverters, required wiring, and necessary permits. Good luck with all of that. I highly encourage anyone who finds this topic interesting to spend time on Will Prowse's DIY Solar Form, a truly fantastic resource. Hey everyone, Tim here, now with short hair. And today, let's figure out if we can get our 920 watts of dormant solar working for us. If you're curious about your solar panel's overall daily electrical production, I have you covered in this short video here. But the conclusion pointed to between 376 watt hours to 575 watt hours per 100 watts of solar. One fatal flaw with this video is I forgot to take into account the solar elevation here at my location in the wintertime. The sun doesn't get above 33 degrees versus in the summertime, it's sitting at nearly 80 degrees. So that of course has a huge impact on solar performance. Before jumping in, we need to cover these, nicknamed suicide cords for a multitude of reasons. You accidentally touch the prongs on one side while the other side's plugged in, you're getting zapped. The power goes out and the line workers are trying to repair the system while you're powering the system, they're getting zapped. Or you feed too much electricity through these tiny wires, your cord catches on fire. In a nutshell, power generated from a portable generator or a power inverter should never ever go into your home's electrical system without a proper transfer switch or a service panel lockout switch. But where there's a will, there's a way, or better yet, a product. Say hello to the 600 watt grid tie inverter. You'll notice there's a lack of standard 120 volt AC receptacles. And although this inverter does produce 120 volts AC, it cannot directly power your devices. Remember the dangers of the suicide cord? The power goes out and the line workers are trying to repair the system while you're powering the system, they're getting zapped. Well, if this little inverter doesn't see 120 volts from the power grid, it shuts down, no longer producing electricity. It's a required feature termed anti-islanding. Now, these inverters also have a very important and required feature of phase matching. AC is alternating current. It goes from positive to negative a set number of times per second. Here in the US, that number is 60 times per second, or more commonly referred to as 60 hertz. These are the parameters which your appliances are designed around. Now we're adding in our own generated power. Let's assume both the grid and our supply are both exactly 60 hertz. That is great, but only if they match their phases perfectly. Otherwise, you could end up with something like this, 180 degrees off, still 120 volts potential, but now instead of 60 hertz, it's double that for 120 hertz. Electronics don't like 120 hertz, specifically electrical motors. Of course, nothing is perfect. Your grid power may actually be 59.9 hertz and your inverter 58 hertz. That could have you drifting in and out of sync. Not good. A grid tie inverter is what you need. Now, as far as ordering one, there are two things to check. Of course, your input and output voltage. Your input voltage is gonna have a couple things to watch out for. Uh, with your solar panels, you have VOC and VMP. VOC is the open circuit voltage, so your solar panel sitting in the sun with nothing connected, and VMP is gonna be the operating voltage. That's what your solar panels normally operate under when they're under load. Now, if you look at my solar panels data sheet here, you can see that they are actually a 48.7 uh, volt VOC and 41.0 volt VMP. And if you look at the specs of this GTI, the grid tie inverter, you can see that it's 
technically slightly out of spec, but I did email the manufacturer and this is what they had to say. So that takes care of that side. The other side is just the output. You can see it outputs 90 to 140 volts AC. It's going to match that to your grid's output. And it also is going to match to 60 Hertz or thereabout, depending on what the power grid is supplying. So this is perfect. As far as why I'm going for 600 Watts, not something higher. I have 920 Watts of solar. Well, realistically, your solar panels are never gonna produce as much as what it shows. And it's actually very rare for me to see anything over 700 watts with my solar panels. And even anything over 600 watts is only for the very peak of the day when the sun's at its highest. And sometimes in the winter time when the sun's not directly above, it's not even gonna see that. So 600 watts is gonna be fine for me. But anyway, I think that's about it on this. Uh, let's go get it installed and check it out. Okay, let's see if we can find a spot for this inside the van. Here in the electrical cabinet, and I'm thinking over here somewhere, it looks like that should be okay right there. Yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Okay, there we go. Well mounted. Uh, the only thing that I am, of course, slightly worried about here is I'm not sure how great the solder joints are inside of this thing, especially being inside of a van that's bouncing around. But we will certainly find out. I'll keep you guys updated down in the comments below. So anyway, that is mounted up. Next is to wire it. Of course, it's just the two solar inputs on the back. And I'm just gonna pull off of my main solar inputs that are going into the MPPT solar charger over here. And then that should be it for wiring besides just the 120 volt output. Let's take care of that right now. All right, the grid tie inverter is now tied into my solar. Same solar that's being used by the van to charge the house batteries. And yeah, looks like it's got power. Next thing to do is try plugging it in and see what happens. Okay, van is pretty much done. We have our extension cord here, run over to our power meter, which I'm not positive if it will read in reverse or not. And of course, with any extension cord, make sure you're not exceeding the maximum power. This one's rated for 13 amps. We're only gonna be about five amps max and 1600 watts. And again, no more than 600 watts max. Okay, our extension cord is live, plugged into the wall, plugged into here. Now let's go ahead and plug it into here. Okay, and let's turn it on and see what happens. Check it out and see what it looks like in the garage. Nice, and it is reading. We are feeding 230, 250 watts back into the house. Wow, and climbing. All right, this is excellent. And it also looks like while the grid tie inverter is powering the house. I'm also still powering the van, keeping the batteries topped off in here. I'm still uh, just topping off at 24 watts, 23 watts, which actually only about 15 watts. The rest is going to the parasitic draws inside the van. So very cool there. Okay, one thing I do want to check is that it's not charging me for the energy produced. We're producing about 315 watts. Oh, nice, it is negative. Okay, I heard stories of certain meters uh, not registering the backflow of power 
and instead registering it as power draw and <laughs> in turn charging you for what you produce as if you use it. So, okay, that is excellent. Okay, it's 11.45, we just passed high noon on this December 10th. Let's go out and check our production. Well, you can tell by the shadows that it is definitely December. We are not getting any overhead straight up sunshine. In fact, ugh, we're in the clouds right now. Well, let's see how we're doing right now on a, a cloudy spot. Our total daily production so far, about 863 watt hours. Right now, we are at, <laughs> yeah, a tiny little 119 watts because of that cloud. But we'll keep an eye on the daily amp hour, or the daily watt hour production. And yeah, again, this is just experimental. This is nothing at all permanent, but it's still interesting to see. Okay, the cabinet case is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and our grid tie inverter is showing about 105, so about 35 degrees over ambient temperature. But it seems to be working great. Okay, the sun is basically set on this partly cloudy ish day, and that is our total production. This is four minutes away from the shortest day of the year. So, it's okay. Okay, I think this needs a little context. So this is just about the shortest day of the year, which is here at the 35th parallel, about 9.85 hours. And we gathered, uh, let's say one and three quarter kilowatt hours. Now the longest day, is about 14.45 hours so let's go ahead and take this times this divided by this okay so longest day but we do have to account for the solar elevation the sun being a little bit higher we can probably call this probably three maybe even 3.25 or, you know, we're gonna have some cloudy days. Let's say 3.2. And let's get a average daily kilowatt hour output. These two. And let's make that annual. Okay, almost 900 kilowatt hours generated annually here in lovely Southern California. The cost per kilowatt hour is about 30 cents. Yes, it's atrocious. So let's see about what it would be that we're saving. Three times this. Okay, about $271 saved annually. That's pretty cool. Let's see what it would be monthly. Okay, so average monthly, about 75 kilowatt hours produced. Again, average. And annually, here we go. So 403, 470. Okay, so maybe about a, maybe a fifth or so of the electric bill taken up by just utilizing the solar panels on the van. Again, this would be if it was a permanent solution. It's not, this is just temporary proof of concept. As I said earlier, don't do this without contacting your electrical utility. And yeah, there's, there's a bunch to it. If you enjoy weird, ill-advised videos such as this, check out the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.